Morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Right, we are at a completely different job today uh, and we are investigating a floor that's fallen away. So if you can see that, that's roughly an inch where it's dropped down. So I suspect that the floor joists have uh, given way. So on this job, there's investigate that replace whatever needs replacing. Uh, there is some new laminate floor going down and skirting throughout. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to hit the link in the corner. And uh, if you have, thank you very much for your support and I shall catch you in a minute. So, right, we stripped the floor off, back to this bit here in the offending corner. So, let me grab the level. So, if I put the level on the skirting board, so not bad at all. So that floor has dropped a good inch. Now, when we've, so there is a, an air brick here, if I can show you a bit better. So there's an air brick there, um, and what's been happening, we think, is that just the other side of the window there, there's a downpipe and it's been filling all in front of in front of this wall. That's why you've got this uh, damp issue running through. So I've recommended that the other side of this wall, uh, that they cut a channel all in front of this window, uh, dig it down and backfill it with pea gravel. And that should help the water dissipate uh, back into the ground. So these joists here, now when they installed these they had like a timber wedge underneath here uh, and I believe these have probably been installed prior to, you know, well I'm 99% sure that before pressure treated timber. So what's happened is over the years it's got, got water coming in and it's rotted that away so it's literally crumbled away to, to nothing. In fact you can see a bit of uh, the wedge here. So, so this here is is basically a timber packy you see all that moving so what we're going to do this fire place has been put down on top of uh the floorboards so what we're going to do the the homeowners have said to us look we're not going to stay here so our plan is we're going to change these timbers this one we're going to shore this one up we're going to make sure this is uh, a lot stronger set back in so we're going to nog in all this out uh, and we're going to replace this this joist here and that joist uh, which is essentially this one here um, we're going to replace those for i think six by three steve's going off to go and source now um, and then we're going to replace these floorboards that are here uh, and work it that way and try and shore up what we've already got here now in a ideal world, it would be if this was a forever home as such, and they were going through the whole room of, right, we're going to do this. I'm not sure whether that fire, it's a gas fireplace in there, and I'm not sure whether it's been, you know, capped off, condemned or anything, but they're, they're obviously not using it. So we're not going to be taking that out because the client doesn't want us to, and also for what they're trying to achieve, the main issue is is to is to sort this corner out, which we've which we've got. So you know that's that being said, that's what we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the rest of this room out now, get all the skirting boards off, um, and get this flooring out. And then when you come back, we'll have the new timbers uh, for the floor, and we'll show you what Stevie's going to do with those. Right, a bit of a tip when you're taking skirting boards off. Now, most um, skirting boards will have had some form of corking, something like that on, on the top. Now, this is an older property. Um, if you don't do this, and it's not a guarantee that this will fix it every time, but if you, you need to score on top here, so you can cut through and try and get down the back. So if you can see like that now where the knife is, so it's gone below the top of the uh, timber line. So you need to score that all the way around because believe it or not, that corking will pull the plaster off. So it's just a bit of a tip. 
try and do that. It's not 100% guaranteed it's going to keep all the plaster on because it doesn't, but it will certainly help reduce the damage that it's caused. So run around with that. You can do you know a section at a time if you want, but the better you do that, the less damage you're going to cause. So it's just a bit of a tip for you. Um, now on there, we've not not pulled that little section up for this second. The homeowner is, because that just leads out into like a, the hall, because the stairs actually lead up like that. Um, the homeowner is actually on a, a, a business call for, for work, because again, because of COVID and all the rest of it, most people are working from home now. So I need to just wait until he's off the, off the phone, making sure that we are going into that hallway. I believe we are, but before you know, I go ripping all that up, um, if it is a case of we are, we, you know, we, we're keeping that section. What we'll do, we'll use the oscillator uh, and cut through that, the, basically the, the door line there. Um, the other thing is we're gonna, because that laminate here has been put down underneath the, the hearth, we're, we're gonna oscillate around that, you know, and, and obviously I'll, I'll show you doing that in a, in a minute, but, but that's what we're, what we're planning on doing. Uh, just cutting around that and then at a later date, but like I said, I believe that they're moving, so it's just mainly sorting sorting this area out. But So a bit of an update, um, right, skirting board, managed to get all that off with not much damage to be fair, I mean I think that was probably one of the worst bits there, so quite chuffed with that for an older house. Right, so what Steve's gone and got is some 6 by 3s couldn't get um, pressure treated to be fair, the, the timber yard didn't have any, it's not a requirement to have pressure treated, so Obviously, let's say these aren't pressure treated or anything. So what we we do anyway is put some DPC round. So we wrap that round on each end, uh, making sure then that when water comes through or any moisture that comes through, like I, said, I think they're speaking to the homeowner now. He's on about doing the trench out there anyway now. So it just stops and helps preserve the timbers a lot a lot longer. Um, we've repaired. This end, we've also put another brace in underneath here to support it. Um, I think what Stevie is going to do is put some noggins in and things like that and support it a bit further. So I just wanted to give you a bit of an update on where we're at. So the floor's all, all this structure now is all done. Um, like I said, we've put uh, some DPC around all those pieces there. We've also kept this away, if you can see that, I'm not sure. So there's a gap, you see? So when, if water does run down here, it won't be coming straight into contact with this piece either. So it can run straight through and drop down. Um, so yeah, so what we're doing now is getting the new floorboards in. Now, at some stage, these ones here have been replaced and these are original. So there's a slight variation on there. So what Steve's doing is putting a packer underneath so we can bring that up and try and lose some of some of that height. We, when we took this section up where Steve's knees are, the actual floor was like exaggerated, like really dipping down. 
uh, and that we found was because of the timber underneath there that we've ended up bracing um, it there wasn't the timber there and the brickwork that was there sort of dropped or some packers have come out or something like that so we've redone that and then jacked this floor back up so we're going to get this floor back down and then we're we're onto the laminate floor in then right so that's where we're up to at the minute with um the laminate so we have gone through into the hallway um so so the floor is down much better much much stronger now uh there's no bounce in it whatsoever now bit of a jump test um so with the laminate floor in you've got to put down underlay uh on here this has got a foil back in underneath i'll just try and keep all the heat upwards uh what steve's doing now is because we've managed to take that hearth completely out um so what we're going to do now we've put it there to so we can basically go up to it well just just underneath the edge of it with the laminate and then we'll pop that back out tomorrow and then reset it with some uh, sand and cement and get it back in place but so the key we've found with uh, laminate flooring is you just have to keep moving your kit once you've got a road like down here wide enough for the chop saw for example is just move all your kit back over to that side keep cleaning as you go in um, because if you do have little bits underneath the the underlay, then you will definitely feel it on on your uh, feet when you're walking through. So that's where we're at. So Stevie's just going to roll that out now, uh, and then we'll just get cracking on the rest of it. And then I'll show you once the flooring bit's done, and then we'll move on to skirting. Right, that's the end of today. Uh, all the skirting boards all on now. Um, uh, Steve's just going around corking those bits up and then we're going to use the powder filler to make good these bits here where they've come through so I've got a massive migraine I feel really ill so I apologise that's what it is but uh, but yeah I'll catch you on the next one <laughs>